I would talk from two perspectives uh, on the horizontal um, uh, priority culture as horizontal priority. So the first would be uh, through the strategic planning, which the Ministry of Finance uh, within these years uh, took a quite active role, and also from the EU funds management. Uh, as, uh, in Lithuania, the Ministry of Finance also plays uh, a role of the managing authority. Those who are in touch with the EU structural funds, cohesion policy, probably you know all these you know, synchronisms as uh, managing authority, intermediate body, and so on. Okay, but uh, it was very interesting the last uh, moment, uh, my colleague uh, Ragnar uh, just told that in Estonia, he's uh, always uh, mixed with the fine, of ar uh, fine arts with finance. So these two words in English language maybe have some similarity and uh, not, by, not by coincidence. Okay, so I briefly already presented the structure of, of my presentation. So I'll give a little overview of the programming uh, and, and strategic context in Lithuania. Then I hope I will a little bit uh, answer from the Lithuanian perspective on uh, your question, going horizontal, is it a um, vague perspective and is this only uh, uh, words, nice words for politicians to, to how to say, to postpone the, 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 the real implementation and real integration of culture. Uh, so I will hope to answer these questions. And also some aspects from Lithuanian perspective on how we plan uh, to, uh, to, to integrate culture in the next programming period. Uh, well, but first of all, uh, when uh, the time came for, let's say, preparation of new strategic documents and, 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 and new programming period uh, for Lithuania, we tried to look, oops, sorry. Uh, we tried to look to the context. When what we found actually, it's old new things. Uh, uh, actually, the figures you see here, they're basically coming from the, let's say, society generally or from, uh, uh, educational uh, field, uh, for example, uh, um, a relative, if you, uh, a, a low engagement in life like learning, um, all the all the places Lithuania rank in uh, in the index of globalization, creativity, climate for creativity, also s problems with the quality of uh, education and mismatch with the. Uh, uh, skills and, 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 and education and so on. So it seems that these problems are permanent. I mean, every time you reopen the programming period, you find the same, the same problems. And uh, I think it was, uh, in, in this context, the, the new approach uh, took place. Uh, I think that uh, there was understood that with the old model of strategic planning, I think, and, and from the sectorial, basically, planning, we cannot solve these problems. We cannot tackle these problems as they are permanently going through from one programming period to another programming period. And uh, actually also looking to another aspects of the political identity and society in general, uh, well, the, the figures are really seem quite sad as, you know, a percentage of people feeling unnecessary in the society. Uh, lots of people would like to emigrate and so on. So these figures, I think, on the one hand, really showed a new, the need of new programming, uh, hoping that it would help to, 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 to tackle these problems. On the other hand, I think these problems opened possibility for culture, really for culture somehow to get as a, as a, as a not as a sector, but as a, how to say, um, integrating sector um, and, and, and try to, to tackle these problems. So in this uh, context, the, uh, the, the new uh, aspects of programming uh, uh, were introduced. 
And the main shift probably was in the long term, uh, Lithuanian strategic planning was uh, to move from, uh, from the kind of very, I would say, a hard uh, um, sectorial based uh, um, uh, strategic uh, planning on the sectorial developments towards more uh, normative, more value based priorities. And uh, very, I would say, very good news actually for us is that uh, it had a quite good political uh, consensus and succession over the change of governments. Uh, and I think that uh, cohesion funds also played a uh, um, quite important role in this, uh, to, to, to not, not to change again with the change of governments, uh, strategies, uh, priorities, but to maintain and, and more look to the, to the implementation of, of that. So, um, basically, uh, the strategies that we talk about uh, are two. One is Lithuania 2030, it's the long-term perspective, value-based, as I say, perspective. And as you see, it bases on the three pillars of smart, also smart, free smarts, uh, but smart society, smart economy, and smart governance. But overall, the, the center is open, creative, responsible people. So I think for the first time in Lithuania, in long-term strategic planning, that words like creativity, like openness, comes into a political debate, into, into, into real um, uh, political discussions. Uh, I would not probably elaborate a lot about this slide because I think all the countries made uh, this exercise, uh, uh, the countries which had their own long-term national uh, documents linking to the EU 2020 strategy and um, and this shows uh, just schematically the, the links. I really will not go uh, quite uh, deep to that. Uh, but the next slide uh, provides you um, a scheme on the national development program, which is a seven-year program, uh, development program, more, more specific program, and uh, more related to EU 2020 strategy. And here, as you see for the first time, um, the culture uh, appears uh, as a horizontal priority, but uh, not alone. And I was really surprised uh, listening in uh, the morning session that uh, culture, health, and regional development is very interrelated. So maybe also by coincidence, but also we have in this national development program three horizontal priorities for that. Um, and I think that also for the culture, uh, the, the link uh, with health and, 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 and rural development, uh, regional development, also is uh, vital for, 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 for its, uh, its, its, its development itself. Uh, here, sorry, maybe for the, yeah, for the bad print, uh, I will uh, change, uh, and you could see the uh, better the the uh, the words uh, when when the slides would be will be redistributed. Um, but here is the actually the intervention logic of the culture horizontal priority. I a little bit later explain uh, the concept. But here you see the two main pillars is the strengthening of creativity and strengthening of identity. What is very, I think, novel and also important in the national development program, this so-called national ex-ante conditionalities, and they are improved governance, uh, developed uh, standards of um, uh, services, and also actualization of infrastructure. I think uh, to to, to make these national ex ante conditionalities, we have we know that there is a European ex ante conditionalities, but also to be more demanding on ourselves and 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 to make this is uh, is we think from the Ministry of Finance and Management Authority is uh, um, 
a, a, a cause for, 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 for better and co more quality development. So actually, when we talk about horizontal priority and culture, what does it mean? Um, I tried to put maybe in quite simple ways uh, of three actually options how to uh, design the interventions for culture or for any other sector. So we can have a horizontal, purely horizontal approach, and we had this uh, approach for 2007-2013. It means that the uh, Ministry of Culture was not in the um, uh, management control system, and uh, the culture as a sector received financing, not, I would say, coincidentally, but uh, through uh, other institutions, through other sectors. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we could count about 2.6% of the total EU funds for this programming period that uh, culture as a sector received. Uh, I'm talking about also heritage, about uh, digitalization, about uh, CCI and, 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 and so on. But basically what we also see that the prevailing approach for in, in this programming period was actually that culture sell, investments in culture served as a, a tourism development um, uh, uh, aspect, uh, but of course other, other areas were also financed. Um, vertical approach, uh, all these vertical priorities, um, we have no experience in this programming period for the culture, um, but from, of course, uh, culture as a sector received national budget, national finance, uh, uh, but uh, also the national finance was uh, quite fragmented and scarce. And of course it resulted to, mm, I would say, uh, mainly dedicated to the development of infrastructure and uh, basically it created uh, everlasting infrastructure probably improvements uh, uh, when you give uh, very little uh, and, and needs are very high. Okay, so what is the new approach? I, I called it coordinated horizontal approach. So I will try explain what it is. Uh, it is a, probably a synthesis of vertical and horizontal approaches, and uh, it means that the well, the Ministry of Culture, as the owner of the of the culture, um, uh, let's say sector, uh, receives its own appropriations. Uh, it is included for the next programming period already in the management control system. It will perform IB functions. And uh, it will have some, how to say, its own pocket for, for the main priorities for the culture to serve. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the inter, interinstitutional operational plan, it is envisaged to, 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 to create. And this plan uh, helps to, uh, to bring additional finances uh, to the sector through other institutional appropriations. Maybe it sounds very, very complex and very difficult, uh, but it is, um, I think, a good plan showing uh, a possibility for the, for the, how the sector horizontally uh, uh, can, be, can be financed. And of course, I think that the change in the perception of the of the culture really changes. It is not seen as only a servant for the tourism development, but basically, I think the the, the role of culture really rediscovered uh, for 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 better impact of social economic uh, provisions. Key elements of the uh, the so-called coordinated horizontal approach. Uh, this plan, as I called, it has a, a floor, a minimum floor, percentage floor for, for that. So in Lithuania, we decided on 4%. Um, then uh, I was already said that appropriations dedicated, ear, not earmarked for the culture in this plan from other institutions. And the coordinator of this plan has a veto right. Uh, and I think that the also uh, a, a, good, a good thing is that the, it, this plan helps to diversify risk 
and bring more finances to, to, to finance the, the, the culture sector. So in concluding uh, my presentation, um, actually what are the, the, the challenges and opportunities? I think uh, I tried to put in one slide because I think that the challenges all the time can't be transformed to opportunities, but it happens uh, too. So uh, the first really, um, we still need, um, with all of what I said, we, I think we still need the, um, more evidence on the culture impact on social and economic development. Second uh, challenge probably would be that the interinstitutional collaboration um, is the challenge overall in Lithuania, but uh, I think that uh, this horizontal idea can, uh, without kind of strong coordination uh, and collaboration between institutions, can go very marginalized. Uh, also, we see that EU funds implementation requirements can have some negative impact if it is not prepared to manage the, the funds. So N plus two rule, uh, also poor project pipeline, not mature projects really can lead to more simplistic decisions on, uh, on, on financing, uh, rather to spend money, not really to finance integrated and, and va added value projects. Uh, and of course, I think uh, also for the infrastructure investments, really uh, overlap of, uh, of uh, creating infrastructures in the regions also is um, of, of high risk. Also educational, uh, multifunctional centers, and also cultural centers, uh, it could be over, over, bring to overcapacity. But still I think it is worth pursuing to bring culture as, a, as a one of legal, uh, other legal uh, ministries and, and sectors into the cohesion policy. And uh, well, uh, I think nevertheless, the, the, the EU kind of context is quite uh, oh, not, not very convenient. Uh, and it requires to be creative, as we heard from the representative from the, from the DG Regio, uh, to find uh, the cultural place. And there are several, I think, uh, interesting options. One is to bring culture with, uh, in, with ITI, with integrated territorial investments. It means for the city's development and also in the more general um, area for lifelong learning. Uh, and I, maybe just two more um, aspects on the opportunities. In Lithuania, what I can see from a very short probably experience of bringing culture to the, to the EU fund system is that it helps to conceptualize and uh, create in the culture sector at least seven year holistic program uh, and, uh, and really identify cross-cutting themes, really try to collaborate with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of, of uh, Interior and, and so on. So I think that, uh, that itself this exercise of being prepared for EU funds uh, uh, creates a good context you know, to be more prepared, to more conceptualize. Uh, really, it also makes a demand on the indicators, not also output indicators, but result indicators which I think at the end of the day really brings more, more, more quality strategic planning to every sector. And this influence we see not only probably in culture, but in also in other, other, other cultures, uh, other sectors. So saying that, I'm concluding my presentation. I hope I was in time and uh, if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer. Thank you.